Good morning, Denise Dryden here. <laughs> Technical difficulties. It's been about uh, 10 minutes uh, past the usual time that I start. And uh, I'm not gonna tell you the whole story. It's pretty funny. Um, so I am in Boise at the Julia Davis um, Park, which is right on the Boise River. You can hear it in the background. You can also hear the geese going by. So uh, it's, this is gonna be kind of fun. So today I wanna talk about systems and how to develop our own systems. And I looked up systems on Wikipedia and Wikipedia says it's a group of interacting, interrelated entities from a un that form a united whole, right? It means that all these different pieces in the, in the air, all these different balls, all these different things form an interaction and bring it into whole and bring it into wholeness. It's also a set of things working together, interconnected network. It's principles of procedures according to how something needs to be done, right? How something's supposed to be done. So systems, we all know them. We know them from work, we know them from our um, devices, from our apps, we know them in sports, we know that systems work, right? But do we know that they work on an individual, familial relationship level as well, right? So that's what I, you know, this is what I do. I'm a coach who I always work with relationships and family relationships. So let's talk about how the systems work for us or don't work for us, right? <laughs> so whether you're in a family system, which is a parent with a child or parents with a child or <laughs> parents with a lot of children, um, what we have is a system that's interconnected, interrelated, and we'll have sort of a cause and effect with whatever's going on. Makes sense. Sort of like a spider web. <laughs> when one person is off and struggling, this isn't like pick that one person up and move them out and everything goes back to normal. What happens is the whole system starts to rock. And so when we're dealing with, you know, kids for, um, who are profoundly depressed, anxious, sad, right? It means that the whole system needs some exploration, which is what I love the most about coaching. So let's go through some examples like a preteen isn't doing well in the adjustment into middle school. Um, you've got an actual teen who's refusing to go to school, absolutely refusing. Not like how many hours or what classes did they miss, but not even what days, how many weeks are they refusing to go to school now? Or we have um, a child in the house who has tantrums, really volcano explosive tantrums, or pulls away and isolates and refuses to participate with anyone in the family. These are kind of some symptoms that I've been um, working with, you know, individually and, and thought, let's just talk about how this system really works. So the system of the family, you know, we don't plan for this. We don't go like, hey, when, when Junior starts to um, struggle, what's our first, second, third, and fourth plan for what to do with that? You know, we don't have a lot of alternatives in place. So what usually happens is we hunker down and we try to force, we try to make something flow, we try to, you know, s take care of what is going on with him or her and forget that there's a whole system in place. We try to do it the way it used to work, um, the way it worked for you in particular, which is this is inconvenient, this is hard, uh, this, I don't, we don't have a lot of time for this to happen within our busy schedules. Yet, because the system is interrelated as a whole, it means that the whole system is now looking for ways to adapt and shift so that it works. So why are we talking about this right now? Um, because we live in a rapidly changing world. At times, if you look around, just look at what's changed in a year. Think back a year from now and think, is it really just a year or does it feel like 10 years? We're going through rapid change so fast and everything is shifting around us. And because we are changing and everything's shifting around us, we aren't really used to working with surprises. <laughs> we, we don't know um, what to do. And, and of course, there are those of us who are well-trained which as change agents. We're, we're managers, we're in that flow, we're looking at surprises, we're looking at adapting, we're looking at changes. I think of, you know, anytime you're an event planner, you have to, you know what the timeline is, but you have to have a lot of flexibility on what to do if it doesn't work. And so you, what you do is you, you recognize what each part, each mechanism, what the role they play. So when you go to the role, which is you're going to be in charge of this, and no matter what happens, you're still going to be in charge of this, but we need to work as a team. 
So when these roles switch and change and we move in relationship with each other, if this one changes and moves over here, then the whole system moves over. And, and so we become an interconnected system that wherever we go, we still have this connection. And we may be able to do this with it, but at the same rate, we still are completely at all times interconnected. Kind of like improv. Yeah, I was thinking about that, and like improv comedy, which is, uh, my job is to, to, to be really uh, well prepared and, and trust myself, right? My other job is to trust my co-comedians, and whatever they hand to me, I have to work with, and then I have to hand it over with love and go like, God, go for it, this is yours. So it's a system, and, and it works really well when we understand it as a system. And so when you have, in a family system, a system shaker, someone who isn't playing by the rules, who someone who isn't able to do what everyone wants them to do, someone who isn't happy, someone who's so sad, anxious, depressed, even um, suicidal. You know, what do you do when you have somebody who's shaking up your system? So let's go from theory into the practical. So the first thing is to assess. What do you notice when somebody's shaking up the system in your house, in your relationship, in your, it, with your kids, even, you know, you know, you can take this into the context of a larger system at work is assess, what do you notice? When did this actually start? Is it sudden or was it gradual? How long has this been building? And then when you start to, you know, sort of get further back and further back and further back, you realize, oh, this has been going on for, couple years this is this isn't this isn't new it's just that it's starting to come to a head now that's information when you can really assess how long when did this actually start and get real and honest what were some of the symptoms that you saw number two um, in what what role has each member of the family or each member of the system played in this scenario who's noticing what's going on what are they doing as a family? Are they putting their head down and ignoring it? Are they being angry because someone's not playing by the rules that they used to, to go? So go big, again, go back out to this big perspective and look at the strengths and look at the skills and tools of each family member and go, well, who's, who's really adapting to this and who isn't? And, and, and start to, to play with each of the individual roles, like who's helping and who isn't? Who's moving with it and who isn't? Okay, does that make sense? So notice the roles that each person plays. Number three, what's going on with you? It has to start and end with you. How does this affect you? Are you trying to rescue? Are you trying to force? Are you lecturing? <laughs> where does this come from and where did you learn how to do that? Whenever we have a systems wobbling, we have to go, what am, whoa, what's going on with me? Am I the wobbler? And if I'm not the wobbler, Who's the wobbler and what's going on when that, in my relationship with the wobbler? We had a coaching session with um, a family and one of the parents gets really angry when the teen goes into this, you know, sulky baby, you know? <laughs> and, and, and it was like, well, yeah, of course, anyone would, but why you, why does that rock you? So get down to what's going on with you? What is the reason why you are rocking? Make sense? Number four, um, what real flexibility do you have? What real flexibility does your family have? You know, is it a, do you have flexible work schedules? Um, where you live, the choices of schools, how you, how you support each other. Really look at where the adaptability and flexibility lies. If you are rigid and you're stuck and you can't move, then the system has no movement. And then all of these parts of the system are trying to move around a rigid but no, is this rigid or is it, is it a little bit more movable? Or is it really flexible and you get to co-create wherever you want to go, whatever you want to do? Number five, how creative are you, really? How can you get out of your own box and start to become a problem solver? Um, to be adaptable, curious, resourceful, like wow, this has been coming for a few years. I actually, when I go to my gut and I, and I check in, I know that this has, been, this has been something that's been going on for a long time. And now it, it may be that this town we thought we wanted to live in isn't the right place. It may be that the job I took isn't working and we have to be creative and go, well, if not this, then what? What am I gonna do? How am I gonna, what, what are my real options? 
So now let's go to the skills of what happens when we're looking at systems. You know, what are the aggravators? Is it external or is it internal? If it's external, is it schools, work, schedules, town as we talked about, or if it's internal, is it anxiety, overwhelm, sensitivity, energetic sensitivity? You know, these are the things that we're starting to talk about more and more. And I'm talking about this on May 14th at the Evolutionary, Evolutionary Impact Global Summit on the Ship Network. So May 14th, it's about energetically sensitive people and how they react internally. And what, what do we do when that internal system is not um, flowing with the rest of it and, and, and why? So how do you learn to work on the external and external levels at the same time? Like how do you, how do you go like, oh, internal stabilization first. Huh internal step stabilization. I have to be able to breathe. I, my breathing system has to drop down to my solar plexus and I have to come from a calm place so that I can notice more. My digestive system has to be in balance. What, what am I paying attention to that's going in and what's coming out and what's the, how is my system really dealing with that? And what do I do when my brain is in full speed and, and it's ruling and, and, and creating a lot of anxiety in my body, how do I, what are my systems for calming that down? Kind of like if we don't start with ourselves first, it's the mom on, it's the parent on the airplane with the oxygen mask. You have to put that mask on first so that you're strong, so that you're alive, so that you can help others. But if you don't put it on and you're trying to help somebody, it's not going to work, right? So the other thing is presence. The other tool you can use is presence. Once you're internally stable, you, what do you notice? Slow down the world around you and look around and go, what do I notice? What, what, what are the patterns? What are the ley lines? What are the connections between things that I didn't realize were so embedded? Now look at these, these ley lines, look at these patterns. What do you see? What do you feel? What does your gut tell you? Like, think, like you're watching a video game. Hmm that's not working what if I try this and what if I try that and know that you can always do redos right oh, that didn't work I better try something else see what wants to happen another skill is um, external adaption moving the parts around to see what happens if 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 we change this how does the whole system work so we're now backed up and we're looking at interconnected systems and go if I move this how does it affect everything else if I move this, how does it affect everything else? Okay, so external adaption. Now, uh, another one is collaboration. So collaborate with the team, with the members, co-create options together. Sit down and go like, hey, I'm noticing that there's a lot of stress maybe about this particular school you guys are all in. What's going on with that? And if we didn't do that, what would be some options that we did? And we have to be able to be open and creative with this. And we have to establish our children as being resources for each other in our spouses and our extended family and our friends or you know whenever we're looking at all the pieces we have to look at them as equal in order to collaborate with them right <laughs> another one is to let go oh my gosh let go of any perceived pathways goals expectations attachments that you have that it needs to go a certain way you have to let go of control you cannot move systems around that are organic and moving like the way this river is flowing if you're you're trying to hold it in place because you're just pushing against the tide and it's not working it doesn't help you so we have to let go of control let go of being in charge you have to join the team you have to really join the team and last you have to teach teach the family members how to have a voice model it include them treat them as equals and teach them how to collaborate with each other because it's the collaboration starts internally as we've talked about in previous videos you know this whole understanding my system and how I collaborate with it and then how I collaborate with others in my world and then how I collaborate with the greater world so it's just simply systems when we really look at it it's just all systems and when we know that the systems aren't working or we know that there's something off we now have some tools for what to do <laughs> so this is what I do. This is Denise Dryden, and if you're interested, you can find me on my website, which is denisedrydencoaching.com. I'm heading out to go play in the sunshine today, and I get to watch my daughter uh, receive her college diploma tomorrow. So uh, I'm a, as I said, I'm a happy mom. You have a great Sunday, and take care. Bye-bye.